We tip this thing off in just a couple of moments from now. Here are the lineups for tonight's game. It's Garlic Clark Jerkovic is how you pronounce that. Beaton and Manlove. Parker, Berlou, Turner, Labuda, and Macedo for Wilkes. Stay with us for the National Anthem. And Roger, you talked about how far Goucher has gone in just a few years with a basketball club. What about Wilkes? Just a couple days ago, they played their first NCAA tournament game. And now with a win tonight, they're on to the Sweet 16. Jerry Rickroad says, we don't want to stop here. This is not the last game. We don't want to stop here. We'll talk about what happens later on to the team that wins. Right now, Wilkes University has controlled the tip-off. Dave Macedo with the basketball. The takeaway, Chad Beaton with the loose ball. This is Dave Clark with the basketball. Talked about him in the pregame. Shot put up, no good. Gerard Garlic was the man who was unable to connect. Here's Labuda, short Labuda, the man that can hit from three-point range. Here comes Chad Beaton. Garlic, or Clark for three, excuse me, Dave Clark. He can nail that one from out there. Goucher has the three-point lead. Turner in the paint. Oh, get back up. Again, Jason Turner this time blocked and finally put up by Tim Berlou, who gets a start tonight. Tim Berlou, the six-seven sophomore who has been coming on strong of late. And the walk out front. Berlou played himself into the lineup with a fine performance a week ago Thursday against Widener. Did very well at Lebanon Valley last Saturday night and against Widener here on Thursday. One of the keys is always the boards. And look at this when you get two, three, and four shots. This is Turner getting it back up. And finally, Timberlou off the glass drops it in. 3 2. Goucher. Labuda. Now Parker has it stripped. Chad Beaton makes the defensive play. David Clark. Works out front, takes a look inside. This is Pedrock Sherkovic. Originally from Croatia, came here as an exchange student, attended J.P. McCaskey High School in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, playing for Pete Cook. Decided to stay on and finish his education here, was recruited by Leonard Trevino. To the hole, the running one. Hander laying it in. Garley. Fans still continuing to fill the Henry Gymnasium. Parker. We're tied up. If there has been one problem in the Wilkes attack in the last 10 days, Parker's scoring has been down from his regular season. They would like to see a good game from him tonight, certainly to pick up the scoring against these Gopher guards. Zirkovic to inbound it. Off the hands of Peter Manlove, and they say that it was tipped out by one of the Wilkes players. Thanks for being part of our telecast here tonight. Glad to have you aboard another live exclusive here on PCTN. Coming up during the half, we'll have some of the high school scores from around the region today. District play on the play. Shot put up and no good by Chad Beaton. Timberloo the rebound. Macedo ahead to Parker. Parker to the hole, doesn't go, his own rebound, puts it back up, it's good. No shot, no shot. And a foul is going to be called. And a foul is going to be called on Dave Macedo. Look at Parker. 
Parker at that time came in with the shot from outside, followed it up, and got his rebound and then converted the basket. One of the things we've seen here early is the fact Macedo will pick up his second personal foul. If you allow me to interrupt the comment, because that's significant, only three minutes and 13 seconds into this one, Macedo has two. One of the keys, Canio Costanzo, to any game is the ability to work on the boards and the ability to get the second, third, and fourth shot, especially at your basket. That's right. We just saw Jason Turner do that for, for Wilkes, and that's going to be a key for this ball game because, Roger, as we, we know, the tempo of this ball game, it looks like this could be a, a fast-breaking type of ball game. If that's the case, the team that gets the rebounding edge will probably come up on top. Jay Williams, number 11, the guard we spoke about on the pregame show from Bishop Hoban is in the lineup now, replacing Macedo with two personals. David Clark cans them both. We're tied at seven. This is Jay Williams. Oh, he took a look at the basket, now kicks it out. Here's Parker for three and got it. Looks like Parker has his eye back tonight, Roger. Two three-pointers and a deuce. Eight points in the ball game for Chris Parker, the six-foot junior. Out of Scranton Tech. The takeaway, Labuda. Odds aren't very good, but Labuda can pull up and drill from out there. He opts not to. Williams looks for Parker. Or excuse me, Turner, who's off the board and got it. is going to be fouled. Chris Parker will pick up the personal foul, and David Clark, the 6'3 senior, will go to the line. He'll shoot two. Hidrock Zirkovic to the bench for a breather. Meanwhile, Clark continues. Points on the board. He is four for four from the free throw line. Seven points in the ball game for him of the nine that Goucher has. Here's Jason Turner. Watch him work. Each team looking for a trip to the Sweet 16. This is the round of 32 throughout the country. Here's pull up jumper, good. Gerard Garlic. Defense! 14-11. And the walk out front. Jerry Rickroad not happy with the call. Third turnover against the Wilkes Colonels. Goucher's committed two. The Wilkes coach. Thurman Toland into the ball game. Along with Marcus Washington, stuffed up there by Jason Turner. Clark for three. Timberloo up high to clear for the Colonels. Labuda. When Labuda gets hot, keep in mind he is a streak shooter. When he gets hot, give him the basketball. Wide of the mark that time with the tray attempt. Clark. Parker, the rebound. Parker, baseline, jump shot. Gerard Garlic up there to clear it for the Gophers. Nearly a jam-packed house here tonight. A few seats left in the end zones. And a very vocal crowd. Nice following up here from... Goucher College. Check this. The idea to feed underneath here to the big guy. Turner got over there, put his hands on it, and deflected it out of bounds. So the Gophers have it under their own basket. 
Good defensive play by the Wilkes center. Putting this one up. And no good, and Jay Williams up the court. Taken away, Marcus Washington. Who wants this thing? Finally, somebody picks it up. They give it to David Clark off the board. Good. Well, if no one else wants the ball, Clark will take it. He knows what to do with it when he gets his hands on it. 31 points in the, the game against Lebanon Valley. He was high man, and that's an awful lot of points as Eric Davis gets ready to go into the lineup. And meanwhile, here is Labuda. It's 16-13, the Colonels by three. Coucher played on the road their last three ball games. Won them all, and they were all upsets. Clark that time couldn't find the footwork to go along with the pass and ball to the walk. Timberloo gets the break. Eric Davis. 6'4 sophomore out of Warren Hills, New Jersey, into the lineup. Davis puts it up, does it go? Rebound, Marcus Washington for the Gophers. Tipped away, quick hands, Chris Parker. Pass was intended for Djurkovic on the inside. Parker not managed to knock that out of bounds. Jagby with the basketball. The Gophers have about five players that are close to averaging double figures per ball game. David Clark, their leader, with 17.7. Not only that, Roger, when you look at their minutes played, they're almost even. Nice takeaway, good quick hands, and Chris Parker will run the floor with the basketball. Now Jay Williams drops it off. Jason Turner's big Great pass by Williams and a super play by Turner on that one. 18-13, Wilkes by five. Under 12 minutes to play here in the first half of action. Backdoor move, Dave Clark. Baseline, Jay, good. Eleven points in the ball game for David Clark. Parker in and out up there to clear it. Zerkovic. And Matt Labuda is going to be called for a foul off the ball. Leandre Marshall into the lineup for the Gophers as Chad Beaton will get a breather there at the 11-20 mark of the first half of action. The way the Gophers are going to Clark so much, it might be a situation where Wilkes may adapt the idea of let him score and stop the other guys. Clark. Good save, who wants it? Finally, it's Eric Davis. Ball kicked around, looked like a, a rugby scrum almost. Here is Parker for three, good. Did they give him three, the Wilkes? Nope, they gave him two. Neil Bennett signaling me here, and I thought it looked like three, but I guess it wasn't. And Eric Davis just a little bit too aggressive defensively on Marcus Washington. He will pick up the personal foul, his first. Team fifth. Five fouls against the Colonels, none charged to Goucher so far. Roger, Goucher does not appear to have any kind of uh, nervousness about playing on the road, nervousness about being in the NCAAs for their first time. They came to play a game and they're doing it. Jay Williams matching up against Leandre Marshall. Now it's Labuda inside off the board. Good. Zerkovic. 
tell you what, one of the things about Bedrock Turkovic is the fact you've got to guard him all over the floor. Yes, he's 6'7", but I'll tell you what, he can shoot from anywhere. One of his assets and one of the things that makes him so tough. Eric Davis. Doesn't go. Foul is called. Dallas Leandre Marshall's his first. We mentioned earlier about Goucher being not afraid to play on the road. They're seven and three at home, eleven and five on the road, and one and one on a neutral floor. So they can play this game wherever they are. I'm going to correct myself. The foul was against six foot seven inch sophomore Pedrock Zerkovic, and on the line Eric Davis, who nails them both. Timeout on the floor. We're going to take a quick break. 23-20 Wilkes. Check this. Whoosh. That's been the story of this one. We have a pace that could get us up to 100. Gerard Garlic hitting that last one. 24-20. And a little bit of a slow start, but the pace and the tempo here has really accelerated. And this one could be one of those racehorse run and gun type games. Our Tierney Joseph into the lineup. Rickovic on the baseline, no good. Whistle and a foul is gonna be called and it is gonna be called against Thurmond Toland, his first personal foul. Toland, a 6'4 senior. One of the guys that was recruited by Leonard Trevino. What a story Leonard Trevino has been. As he began this year, 37 and 61. Keep in mind, this was a program started from scratch five years ago. There was no basketball at Goucher. From the corner, off the mark, and here is the pick. Parker to the hole, offensive foul. Chris Parker draws his second. Personal foul that will negate the bucket and give the basketball back to Goucher. David Clark back into the lineup, replacing I. Tierney Joseph. Look at Garlic stood right in there and took the charge with the knees of his opponent in his chest. That's how high up Parker could go. But Garlic stood in there and took it. 19 and 9 overall this season, 9 and 5 in the Capital Athletic Conference was Goucher. Labuda straight up, but it doesn't make any difference. Thurmond Toland up there to drop it in. His first two points of the ball game, and Wilkes has seen the lead cut to two. One part of the scouting report's definitely been true is they will go very deep on their roster. Wilkes that they work it inside. Eric Davis gets two. Lead back to four at 26-22. Tipped out of bounds. Chris Parker, very quick hands. He has 72 steals on the year. And he is going to get a break as Dave Macedo back into the lineup. Get a look at Wilkes and the ball movement. Eric Davis finished the play. David Clark, no good, tipped out of bounds, and Rooks will have possession of the basketball. Crowd continuing to fill in the few vacant seats left. There's only a few seats at the far end zone where Wilkes is working right now. Everything else here pretty much sold out. Jay Williams looks for Turner. Turner says, where do I go? 10 seconds on the shot clock. There's Turner. Foul. Big guy on the floor. Gets the foul, and that'll be Jerkovic picking up his second personal. Here you'll see a look at it as Turner tries to get by. Throws up that underhand basket shot. The 63% free throw shooter will step to the line. 
Jason Turner, the 6'7 junior out of Owings Mills. Now they say no, no shot. It was on the drive. Talking about percentages, Roger. Goucher shot 65% from the floor on field goals attempted against Lebanon Valley on Thursday night. A remarkable figure. Eric Davis doesn't go. He's got it. Marcus Washington up there for the Gophers. Glad to have you part of this one tonight. NCAA Division Three basketball action here on PCTN. Live coverage from the Henry Gymnasium here on the campus of Wilkes University. Television rights granted by the NCAA. And we're pleased to bring this one to you. Goucher throws this away, and Dave Clancy very quickly up and off of the bench, and he will check into the Wilkes lineup. Last Saturday night against Lebanon Valley, Clancy came off the bench and hit two good buckets in the second half drive. One, a soft hook that put Wilkes ahead 51-50 with about eight minutes left to go in that game. I Tierney Joseph also gives Chad Beaton a rest for the Gophers of Goucher College. Under seven minutes. Oh, no. Seven point Wilkes lead. It seems like a long time since anybody threw the ball in the hole. It was exactly one minute and 40 seconds. Williams with the loose basketball. And in this game with that pace field, that seems like a long time. It certainly does. We don't have any slowdowns like we had this afternoon. <laughs> You caught that one. Hazelton area and Coughlin. Uh, pull up jumper by Clark is no good. Hazelton area, by the way, the winner 38 35. They are the District 2 champions. I have Clark missing his last four shots for Goucher. Eric Davis. Clark the rebound. I Tierney Joseph handles the basketball and moves it into the front door. 5.45 to play here in the first half. Oh, what a look. Beautiful from Gerard Garlic. Marcus Washington, I believe, gets the gets credit for the basket. Washington's first two points. 29-24. Under 10. Now on the shot clock. Machino, it's in and out. Tipped around, out of bounds. Gaucho. Possession. Jason Turner back into the Wilkes lineup, and Eric Davis gets a breather. And back into the Goucher lineup, Thurman Tolan. Eric Davis coming out, the sophomore, saw a lot of bench duty Thursday night against Widener. A lot of people feel that with a little more polish, he's going to be stepping right into the scoring totals and rebound books for Wilkes. He's got a lot of potential. He can do a lot on the floor. Clark tries to penetrate, blocked by Clancy. Clark gets his own rebound back, puts it up, it's no good, Laputa the rebound. Turner. Baseline, cut off by Laputa, kicked back out. Chad Beaton. They say that was a two. And now they give him credit for three, which is what I thought it was in the first place. 
two-point game. Wilkes on top. 345 to play. They drop it back to Clancy. It goes. He's fouled. They're going to score the basket, and the foul is going to go against Itierney Joseph. And Dave Clancy will go to the line to make the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Nice soft shot for Clancy out of Lake Lehman High School. He'll shoot one. Clancy got the three-point play, 32-27. Dave Clancy playing out of Lake Lehman High School. The Black Knights just up the road from Wilkes University. From out front, this one is short, Chad Beaton, and Matt Labuda will run the floor. Labuda, underneath Clancy, off the glass, good. Four twenty-seven, a seven-point edge. Five points for Clancy in a row. Extend the lead back to seven after it's cut to two. Now oh, the three-point play can change the complexion of this game in a hurry. Chad Beaton nails back-to-back -back trays, and it's 34-30. As we are now under three minutes to play here in the first half of action. Stay tuned during the halftime. We'll have scores of many of the area high school matchups this afternoon in district play. Oh, nice move around the Buddha. And then Gerard Garlic is going to be called for the player control foul. He made a great move to get by Labuda. Watch this. Whoa. Good move there. Watch Clancy come up on defense. Clancy established position. Two minutes, 30 seconds left here in the first half of action. Jay Williams for three. Every time one of these colonels puts up a shot for three, the bench is showing the three-point signal. Trying to encourage the ball to go in. Jerry Rick Rhodes team out in front, 34-30 as we head down the final couple of minutes here. Goucher, three-point shooting, three and nine. Wilkes, four of, or three of five, excuse me. Wilkes, four of nine. Buda, here's Turner. That's the third turnaround hook for Turner that's gone so far tonight. Jason Turner loves to work in the paint. He shoots almost 60%, 58.4 to be exact, from the floor. That's the guy that you want to get the basketball to. Out front, Chad Beaton. Woo, Chad Beaton. This time it's only for two. But he now has eight points in the ball game, and that was close to three-point range. As we're at a minute and 15 to play here in the first half of action. NCAA Division III play. Chris Parker is up there. That one was for two. And into the lineup, I Tierney Joseph for the Gophers of Goucher College. Dave Clark, who was their high scorer 13 times this season, goes to the bench. Beaton has picked up the shooting business for the Gophers with Clark getting cold. Beaton got very hot. The pace has been slowed down somewhat. Shot put up. with the last follow-up. There's Parker again from Drew. This time that's a go. Ball tipped around, and the action under the basket is furious. 
both teams knowing they have to stay active on the boards. And we've seen some intense board play. They're about the only empty seats that you see right there. Aside from that, this place is packed. Turner launches for three. Doesn't go. Who's up there? Coming down hard. Yeah, I'm not sure here. That's Dave Clancy. Clancy came down hard and picked up the first one as well. We're gonna see this rebound coming off on the far side for the Gophers. It's Garlic and Clancy. And you see Dave go down face first into the floor. It's the seventh foul against the Colonels in the half, and that means that the Gophers will be shooting one and one. Gerard Garlic will go to the line. The Clancy foul puts a 73.6% free throw shooter on the line. And this is the front end of the one and one. You see the game clock in the bottom of your screen. Here's Parker for three. Time has run out on that play. The teams will head to the locker room. Vance here being treated to an intense evening of basketball. When we come back, we'll have the halftime show. Lots to talk about. One thirty-four Wilkes shooting from the outside, 50% for field goals for Wilkes, 47% for Goucher. Now Goucher shot 65% in the game at Lebanon Valley. Three pointers, they're even four for nine for both clubs. Free throws, Wilkes shot three of three, four of five for Goucher. Rebounds, Goucher has the lead by two, and in turnovers, the Gophers have committed 10 to the Colonels, seven. So 20 minutes or more to go, 41-34 the score for Wilkes at the half, Roger. Thank you, Neil. We'll see if we can get the scores at the end of this one for you, and if we can, we will try to do that. Halftime just kind of zipped by so quickly there. Hope you enjoyed the first half of this one, 41-34. Wilkes with a seven-point lead. A couple of the scores from this afternoon that we can give you right now. Hazleton area over Coughlin, 38-35. Dunmore over GAR, 58-49. And Bishop Hoban over Carbondale, 51-48. We'll get the girls at the first opportunity we can with their scores. Got to talk with Chet Heim, the head coach of Bishop Hoban, just a little bit before. He said, yeah, we get to go up and play Wellsboro and that seven-foot guy that's going to Notre Dame. <laughs> well, they, they lost today. Uh, they lost uh, to Loyal Sock, I believe. Turnover for Wilkes. Parker caught up in the air, had defense on his jumper, tried to hit Macedo on the side, but Macedo was cutting. It was one of those cases where it was either the block shot or the turnover. Chukovic inside now has five points in the ball game. He has closed the gap to just that, five points. Well, I'm sure Chet Hine will be pleased if that's the case, Neil. Harris Parker, up there, to go, battle four. Timber Lou, reckless abandon all over the floor and goes down hard. The trainer picks him up and says, go get him, big guy, Berlou, 6'7". Just a sophomore, lots of growing time left. That's a good look at the leading shot blocker on the Wilkes Colonels team. Berlou showing the experience. Hey here in the postseason play, and he did a fine job against Widener a week ago in the MAC qualification game here for Wilkes. Peter Manlove back into the Goucher lineup, the 6'3 senior. And Zerkovic just nails a three. And 
just that quick. This is a two point ball game, 41 39. Labuda to Turner, who works in the paint. And now they call him for three seconds. He had to get that shot up because he was there for a long time. And when he kicked it back out of the paint, the whistle blew and a violation occurred. Chad B. Wilkes steps up with man-to-man -man defense. Turner on Jerkovic is a very interesting matchup. Meanwhile, up in the paint, Marley gets it. They're showing everybody on this Gosher bench is able to come in here and do some scoring, and they're doing a good job of it. Garlic that time. Averages 10.7 a game. Labuda doesn't go as Zerkovic up there to clear it. For the Gophers. Wellick to the basket, blocked by Berlou. That's why Berlou has worked his way into this starting lineup. That kind of play right there. Not back in your face, out of the gym almost. 31 blocks on a year for Berlou. Look how high up there he is, and boom. Nails it. That ball was three feet out of the hands of the shooter. Parker, Parker with 17. Great heads up steal by Macedo in the pass to Parker. Out of bounds. And it went off Macedo's foot. Throughout the course of the upcoming high school interdistrict tournament, we invite you to check this spot on the dial often, many times because of the close time frame that we work within to get permission to get things out. It doesn't provide for enough, enough opportunity to adequately promote the fact that we're on, so we invite you to check here often. Berlou this time, I think, maybe with the body, we'll see. Yep, Berlou picks up his first personal foul. Berlou again with the block. You see his hand extended, but he'll make the contact with the body around the hip. Of course, from his hand to his hip is a long trip. Yes, it is. Here is Dave Clark, who is now Five of five, 31 points, as we had mentioned earlier, against Lebanon Valley. That was the victory that got him here. He now is six for six with 13 points on the night, and we are tied up for the first time in the second half at 43. We were tied once in the first half of play. Lee changed hands twice. Here's Turner trying to untie it. Foul called. Turner to the line. And it is Garlic that picks up the personal foul in second. As you get another look at the play. Turner working to the right. Parker, rather, Turner was fouled on the outside. He'll go to the line for two. Jason Turner with nine points in the ball game. Looking to hit double figures. David Clark to the basket. Shot put up. Doesn't go. Who's got it? Parker kicks out to Turner. And here come the Colonels. Macedo. Oh, nice feed to Chris Parker. Macedo, who gets about four and a half assists a game, just got his 119th on the season, and that was pretty. Well, when you look at the point total in the Mars box score, you won't see that. You'll just see two for Parker, but you know where that came from right there. Great feed underneath. I tyranny Joseph back into the Line up, David Clark going to get a quick breather as he goes to the bench. Leonard Trevino has seen his team fought back, fight back, and tie it. 
And now they trail by four as Wilkes has the last couple of buckets. Matt Labuda picked up his second personal foul of the game on that, Roger. Each team looking for a trip to the final four. Actually, the Sweet 16 next. This being the round of 32. And the foul on the floor is Pedrock Zerkovic with some good footwork will cause Jason Turner to pick up his first personal foul. Looks like Turner's gonna get him with his foot on the way down here, and that's what it was, his left leg or left foot. Made contact with Jerkovic, first foul on Turner. Garlic, pull up jumper, good. Nice move out front to spring himself loose. Inside they go to Turner. There's Berlou to Laputa. Does it go and up there to tip it was Garlic and tipped it to Zerkovic. Garlic, the jumper good. Looked like he was setting up for a three, moved over to shoot the two. This game is tied. Garlic has 10. That's his average, 10.7 per ball game. Jason Turner out of Owings Mills, Maryland. What a nice soft touch to give the Colonels a two-point lead. Jason Turner with 12 points in the ball game, 49-47. Garlic shot, doesn't go, and a good effort on the part of Peter Manlove to come down with a loose basketball. Here is Beaton, he can nail for three. Garlic with a rebound, baseline jumper, good, tied up. Garlic's been doing a good job for the Gophers here in the second half. I've got him for four field goals this half. Parker's shot doesn't go. Here is Laputa doing one by four. It doesn't go. Who's got it? Zirkovic will run the floor. He drops it off to Beaton, who got the layup. They're going to rule this good, I believe. I'm not sure of the call. It was on the far end of the floor. Looks like the ball went off the foot of one of the Gophers coming up court. Colonels have it, no score, coming back the other way, tied at 49. And a timeout. This one taken by Wilkes University. 49's on the scoreboard. We'll be back. And you'll see it all. Right here on the place that delivers you the event, not just the highlights. And we're glad that you have an opportunity to witness yet another event here tonight. And what an event it is, 49-49, if you've just tuned us in, in this NCAA Division III playoff between Wilkes and Gouster. And look at Turner. Pull-up jump shot was off the mark by Ituni Joseph. And Wilkes will have an opportunity to extend the lead. 51-49, they lead by two. Tim Berlou back into the lineup. Here's Laputa. Two, they say. Laputa's ninth point of the ball game. His first two of the second half clock will tick under 13 minutes. Here from the Henry Gymnasium on the campus of Wilkes University. Foul on Jason Turner, who picks up his second personal. Now we hope about it. Turner, Roger Bean from Owens Mills, Maryland. Of course, he knows Goucher, and Goucher knows him. But Dave Macedo, number 10 for Wilkes, is hoping to get a little hometown flavor of his own because if the Colonels win here tonight, next weekend's games will most likely be in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, which is just across the line from his home in Somerset, Mass., about 12 miles east of Providence, Rhode Island. So hometown's a little bit on the line here tonight. You sound like you know that area. 
very well. <laughs> Told assistant coach Tom Sheplock some of the best seafood places in the world. And I told him the lobsters come back. Neil Bennett, for a number of years, the general manager of the Pawtucket Red Sox, and that's in that neighborhood. Parker selling himself out, unable to come up with a loose basketball. I tyranny Joseph will inbound it back in the lineup. Marcus Washington. Washington was high man for the Gophers in four games this season. Averages eight points a game, but you can see when he's high, he can do a lot better than that. Tim Ballou replaced in the lineup by Eric Davis. And also back in for the Gophers, Chad Beaton, replacing attorney Joseph. You gotta be strong, baby. Good look from Clark to Joseph. Nothing happened there, and they kicked it back out. This is Beaton working against Labuda. Kermit Toland also into the Gaucho lineup. Ten seconds on the shot clock. And that will bring the chant of air ball, but they say it was blocked. They one of the, say it was blocked. One of the colonels had his hand on that ball as it was coming down. Wasn't able to gain control, so the Gophers have it in their own basket. They'll have to get this up in a hurry. Five seconds on the shot clock. Who's going to do it? Washington, Marcus, that is, put it up, but it didn't go, and here comes Wilkes. Laputa. Six forty-nine, 49 a seven-point lead, Neil, and this one has been pretty big. And Lapu that's the halftime lead regained. Laputa with the interception. Fans pick up the chant, Buda. Here is Davis working inside. And David Clark comes down with the loose basketball. Underneath, Washington fouled. Let's see who they call this on. It is going to be called on Jason Turner. That's his third personal foul, all of them coming here in the second half of action. And Dave Clancy will replace the 6'7 junior Jason Turner. In the lineup, Turner will go to the bench with 14 points. Major contribution for him in this one. Marcus Washington now with three in the game. Perfect from the line. has been cut to five. Eric Davis. Extends that lead back up to seven. There's Marcus Washington to the hall. No good up there. Coleman can get it. Partially blocked was the shot by David Clark. Get a hole. Get a hole. Marcus Washington. Fouled by Eric Davis, who picks up his second personal foul. Davis. Oh, they say it was Jay Williams. Sixth personal of the half against the Colonels. Only one charge to the Gopher so far. We have a timeout on the floor. 58-51. And Wilkes with a seven-point lead. Right now, fouls are starting to become a factor in this ballgame as far as the Colonels are concerned, particularly with their big man, Jason Turner, picking up three here in the first ten minutes of the second half. 58-51.
Whoops. Cheerleaders on the floor right now entertaining the crowd. And Roger, last Saturday down at Lebanon Valley, they had about half their squad because of some of the kids who couldn't make the trip, but they did an excellent job. There you see one of the replays. I believe that was Turner going to the bucket. Jason Turner has done an awful lot to establish the lead here for the Wilkes Colonels. Almost three quarters of their way to their goal of winning here tonight. 10 15 to go in regulation. Here is Eric Davis from the outside. Can't get the ball in, so he takes the jumper and nets that one. Nothing but twine on that one. go back to live action approaching what would normally be the final quarter if played in fours Wilkes with a seven point lead at 58 51 first time we've seen Goucher look like they're a little slow down the attack and then you come right back and you find Chad beaten Coming in here, he was 47 of 131. He's got two three-pointers on the night, so he's got 49 threes on the year. Foul on the floor. I believe that'll go before the shot. And the foul is going to be called on Thurman Tolan. And Roger, it's going to be very interesting to see Turner with the third foul, just exactly what Wilkes is going to be doing offensively. And also, for Goucher, offensively, they have not gone to David Clark as much as they did in the first half. And I think that offensively helps them out a lot better instead of worrying about one player to do everything offensively. <laughs> As Dan Clancy launches this one up, it doesn't go. Battle on the floor. Who's got it? Jay Williams. Good effort that time. Eric Davis to keep that one alive. Jay Williams says, here, I'll take it. He had a toe on the line. That was for two. But the arc is 19-6. He took that one from 19-4. That was about it. He was that close to the three. The official thought about putting his hand up and held it down. There was a toe on the line. Underneath. Check of it. Doesn't go. And Chris Parker, a rebound. Jerry Rickroad talked about trying to control the pace of this one, trying to work a half-court ball game, and for the most part, they've been relatively successful in that. Here's Lapuna for three, it doesn't go, and Clancy, and Peter Manlove tie each other up. Now, now they're saying that Peter Manlove is gonna pick up the personal foul. Manlove is out of Wilmington, Delaware, played for Salesianum High School, one of the well-known high schools down there. And at one time, it was the home court for the old Wilmington Blue Bombers. As we see Dave Clark out of the ball game right now. Pull up by Parker, good. He has 21 points in the ball game. Biggest lead right now, eight points. 62-54. Doesn't go. He's beaten ahead. Eric Davis. Great body control by Eric Davis. And a timeout. This one is taken by the Gophers. As Wilkes has just extended the lead to 10 points. We're going to pause, but we'll be back. 7.50 to go here. Don't go away. Hey, I'll tell you what, they all went in on the act, as does Kanio Costanzo. Kanio? Roger and Neil, 
Goucher needs right now to score a bucket. Crucial time for them. Biggest lead for Wilkes at 10. They've got to score immediately. Can't let this one get out of hand. Good point, Connie. I'll win the paint. Doesn't go. They needed that one. Marcus Washington unable to drop it in, and Wilkes with an opportunity up the lead. Jason Turner doesn't go, but he is fouled. Jason Turner, when you get the ball to him, in the paint, inside, under the basket. Boy, he is just something to watch. He's showing so much footwork here. There you see him get a very high pass, brought it down, takes the move, anticipates the contact, and still gets a shot off fairly accurate on the cylinder. You can see the improvement in his game since December when we're in here against Susquehanna. He's just doing such a good job of moving around in the pivot. We hope that throughout the course of the season you've been catching some of the great local college matchups here on PCTN. Lafayette, Bucknell, Scranton, Kings, Kings, Wilkes. Wilkes, Scranton, we hope that you have enjoyed them all. Well, you can certainly see from the crowd here tonight, the fans enjoy this Division Three basketball. Jump ball. That'll go to Goucher. Dominance extending itself for Wilkes on the board so far. I've got them nine of the last 13 rebounds. And that was with Turner on the bench also. One of the things we talked about earlier, Neil, was the necessity on the part of both clubs to control the boards, in particular the offensive boards. Very true. You need that second shot, second and third follow-up. Good matchup. Jerkovic and Turner. <laughs> Taken away by Eric Davis as he snuck inside. Macedo sees the lane, kicks it back out. Labuda for three. No. Macedo. Goucher with yeah. another timeout. 67 54, 641 left. Now we talked about the importance of hitting the boards. Watch Macedo work inside off this Miss Labuda shot. Watch. Works against David Clark and gets it up. That's muscle work. Macedo is 6'2 sophomore getting the rebound and the follow up. One of the Colonel's cheerleaders doing her job here tonight as you look at a jam packed university campus gymnasium here at Wilkes University. And there are people that say people don't follow Division Three basketball. Look around you. They obviously have never come out or turned on their TV set, one or the other. Finally, Gal Platt against Macedo. Shot clock at 10. Tolan. Somebody got to get this up. Clark says me. Just beating the shot clock, and they say that it did not hit the rim within the 35. And Wilkes will have possession of the basketball. And now it'll be full court press for the Gophers. Chad Beaton is going to pick up his second personal foul. Six Neither minutes. team in the bonus, Neil. Six minutes to go, six team fouls for Wilkes, five for Goucher. Watch Turner. Who now has 17 in the ball game. David Clark off the board. And Neil, that ends a dry spell, I believe, of how long? Well, their last basket came at the 9.57 mark, so we'll go for four minutes. And they come right back and get another one as Marcus Washington off the steal. And Jerry Rickroad is asking for a timeout, but not until he sees what's going to happen. Uh-oh. 
and they're going to give the timeout to Wilkes. Jerry Rickroad had asked for it well in advance of that steal. And he saw things getting a little bit sloppy. Leonard Trevino knows his work is cut out for him. 11 points down, 5 minutes, 23 seconds left in this one. A lot of fans made the trip up here from Maryland to support the Gophers. And that is good to see. They had expected anywhere from 300 to 400. Tanio Costanzo, as we get a look at these last two scores, this one still could come down to crunch time. It can. And for Goucher, I'm surprised the last couple times down the court, that man, David Clark, has not gotten the ball more often. He was the one in the early first part of the first half who kept Goucher in the ball game. You just mentioned about a dry spell. One for five. And he is a player who clearly He's got 15 points in this ball game. He is a he is a player clearly that Goucher has to look for if they're going to turn this thing around with 5:23 left. Keep in mind he was the man Conio that had 31 against Lebanon Valley in their last outing. Led the team in scoring in 13 of their games this season. His average is 17, so he's close to that at 15. But they need more tonight. Look for Wilkes to continue to try to control the half-court game, and Dave Macedo picks up his third personal foul. Player control fashion. You can be the judge here. Who was there? How's your officiating skills? Did you call it right? Great man love. Got up there, but it was tipped out of bounds by Jason Turner. Jay Williams back into the Wilkes lineup. Dave Macedo is told to take a seat next to Jerry Rickrow, the head coach. Side. They work to Marcus Washington, left-handed hook is good. Nice little underhand hook for Washington, who has eight. The steal and a whistle. And the foul here is going to go against Jay Williams, his second personal foul. Might be a break that the foul came when it did on the outside on the floor because that pass found an open man underneath that could have converted the two. Lots of concern on the part of Jerry Rick Road as Chad Beaton will step to the line. He's seeing things getting a little bit haphazard out here. Wilkes had played a very controlled game. Chad Beaton, one of two, and Jason Turner does the window clean. Jay Williams out of Bishop Hoban High School. Seven straight points for the Gophers. Here is Labuda. And Chad Beaton has just picked up another personal foul. Trying to say, hey, he's using his elbow and pushing me off. It's not going to sell. Chad Beaton picks up his Wake third up, personal foul. Up, A fresh 33 on this, or 35 on the shot clock. Eric Davis doesn't go. LaPorte with a rebound. The turnaround shot good. Ten-point lead once again for the Colonels of Brooks. Beaten against Williams. Beaten for three. Over the Turner, back, over the, the rebound. The board work so important. Wilkes 
Hawks with a 10-point lead. Clock is under 3.30 to play. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here is Labuda. Matt Labuda has 16 in the game and coming right back with a quick answer, Marcus Washington, who now has 10 points. The Gophers just won't go away. Well, you ever have a gopher in your backyard? They're hard to get rid of. Foul is going to be called here on Gerard Gurley. His third personal foul. That'll be the one-on-one -on -one situation for the Colonels. Both teams are now in the bonus. Herman Toland into the lineup as Chad Beaton will get a quick breather. <laughs> Matt Labuda shoots 76.1% from the free throw line, has just picked up his 17th point of the ball game. That's his Team leading average, he now has eight. David Clark up for three, no good, and up there to clear that one, Eric Davis out of Warren Hills, New Jersey. Here's Chris Buckner. Uh oh, talk about a thrill. Timeout called for. Davis that time, up and over the back of his teammate, Matt Labuda. Watch this. Now watch what happens behind this action. Whoa. And that's our cameraman getting out of the way. That's Glenn, right? That's Glenn. Glenn says, hey, I've been toppled enough this year. For work for those fine folks, this one would not be possible to you in your living room tonight. And we hope that you've been enjoying this live telecast granted under television rights provided PCTN by the NCAA. Golfers cut the lead down to eight just two minutes and 20 seconds ago, but the Colonels came roaring back and now have a 14-point lead, their biggest advantage of the night. Under two and a half minutes to play, 77-63. Wilkes will undoubtedly be taking the air out of the ball right now. Goucher needs to put up a couple of three-point shots. Meanwhile, here's David Clark for two. He has 17 points in the ball game. And that's his average. Right back, Jay, right back, Jay. Jay Williams. Here, Labuda calling for the ball on that one. Under two minutes. The Colonels looking to advance to another round, the Sweet 16 round, as Marcus Washington picks up the personal foul. Jay Williams will go to the line. Jay Williams shoots 77% from there. Dave Macedo back into the lineup, replacing Eric Davis. Jay Williams was four for four in the previous round versus Widener. His high school coach, Chet Hine, among those here in the audience tonight. Williams has four in the game. He's been a story, too, as Clark goes to the basket. Laputa comes out of it, and he is going to be fouled. The foul is against Dave Clark. Frederick Jerkovich back in the ball game for Goucher. 
pitcher out of Maryland, Towson, Maryland, only five years ago began their varsity basketball program. And their success would kind of make you think about King's College up the street with their football program. A little harder to build a football program in that amount of time, but it's certainly something to look at and compare the fact that a program started from ground zero. Well, the Gophers are going to go home on the short end of this one, but Leonard Trevino, what a great job he has done. His kids not knowing how to say quit. 15 points in the ball game for Chad Beaton. But one of the things that you just got to be very thrilled for the, the Gophers is how far, as you mentioned, Neil, they have come in just a short period of time. Well, when you knock off the national champions on their floor as they're trying to defend their title, you've had a tremendous effort right there just to show what they did. They certainly have demonstrated tonight that they are capable of playing with anyone in the country. A program that has come an awfully long way. And so has Wilkes. Even though they had the program chronologically for a long time, for a long time, they had a hard time getting their W's, putting them together, putting any kind of streaks together, and all that really changed when Jerry Rickroad came here to post the 60 and 19 record. The winningest record years. meal in the school's history. David Clark. Takeaway by Parker and the foul committed by Gerard Garlic. Under one minute to play. And look at this crowd giving their team a standing ovation as the Colonels come off. All new unit in there now for Wilkes. Let's listen to the ovation. What a great moment it is in the history of Wilkes University basketball. They will get us. Uh, the crowd has picked up what I was about to say. You hear them chanting Sweet 16. And I was going to say what a proud moment being able to make a trip to the Sweet 16. Parker, who has been off his game the last three times out with a great effort here tonight. 25 points. They needed those points tonight. When you looked at the way Goucher worked their personnel, the scoring that they've had, they had to find some scoring from the attack someplace, and Parker said it's mine again. This has been a tough place for opposing teams to win. This Parker will get the accolades certainly do him from his teammates. 26 points in the ball game. And Corby Swan into the ball game for Wilkes. With the rebound. Mark Shiner. Can boast to the folks at home that he scored in an NCAA division playoff game. David Clark. We'll see his outstanding career come to a close here tonight. Out of Cantonsville High School in Baltimore, Maryland. Shiner's tip no good. Ten seconds left. Wilkes will advance. The Wilkes Colonels led by that man Jerry Rick Road head to the Sweet 16. What a night of basketball here at the March Center. Congratulations to both teams on the outstanding job and performance.
that they turned in here tonight. At the half, it was 41-34.